Hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bulldog. <laughs> uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and put this thing together and hope that it works out okay. Uh, I've got all the parts cleaned up and the best that I'm going to do I was watching TV before I walked in, out here to the shop and the news is on and all of a sudden I hear this uh, about Trump getting something stuck to his shoe walking up the ladder to the plane as if that was a sin that he had something stuck to the bottom of his shoe and the first thing they go for is it was toilet paper they i'm telling you man these people take no freaking uh missed opportunities to fuck with our president man leave him the hell alone people jesus christ man so he got something stuck on the bottom of his shoe. Big fucking deal. I don't understand what, why, what the hell's going on with this country today, man. But it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, uh, that could have happened to anyone. And then they're saying, well, why didn't somebody tell him about it? Because no one cared as much as the media did. Media is just looking for a reason to get him impeached. I guess that's impeachment reasons. Oh my God, he had something stuck to his shoe going up the ladder. We better impeach him. Anyway, enough of that. That just drives me nuts. We may have some problems on this. I don't know yet. But we'll go ahead and put you guys down here. So that you guys get a bird's eye view of what we're doing. So what I did, I screwed this to the vice table. And now we get to take it loose. And I'll tell you why I've done that. I done that so that I could mount this in the uh, vise sideways so I could drape this cord up here and have it as straight as possible when I go to put my silicone in this hole. And that's what I did. I used RTV gasket maker and squirted it down in all the way around because it's a big pocket all the way around it evenly. So to keep that up there straight so that when that dried, it dried all the way around it and it had the equal amount on it all the way around it. So this thing ought to be sealed or ought to be able to seal. So let's get this board out of the way. And then we're going to take our Dremel and do a little more fine tuning. Alright, so they're nice and clean now. Alright, where to start? We got our gasket maker, we got our oil, which I don't think there's enough. Uh, but there was en there's enough there that we should be good. Now I'm going to test that oil and see if it is a conductor of electricity before we put it in there. If it is, then it's the wrong stuff. But I don't think it is. Alright, we got the gasket here, which I couldn't get completely clean, but it is flat. So, uh... It just looks a little dirty. That ain't no big deal. We're gonna put RTV gasket maker on on this 
surface and this surface. I don't know why my radio is starting to do that. Now my radio is starting to come on on me by itself. So, first thing we need to do, I couldn't get this any cleaner. That's as clean as it'll come. Uh, first thing we need to do is work with this piece. So we want to go ahead and put this armature in here. And we're just going to take a little brush. And just we're just going to Just all up with that. Alright. So don't forget you have this plastic bushing that goes on first. That goes on there and goes up against that. Now we have a hole here that I'm hoping just goes into this part and not in the bottom. Um, there ain't no hole coming out the bottom, so that's what it is. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put this in here, turn that up. Then you have this seal here. It's two pieces. You got looks like a little shoulder. And this is hard plastic, so this is basically your seal, and that goes on against this rubber seal. So when you tighten this down, it's going to squish it, like so, and it's going to create a tight seal. So now, we'll put our impeller on. Now we've got that on there. Now, clean our hands. Alright, so now we need to put this on. This doesn't require a seal. Alright, uh, so I wanted to show you what I did to straighten these threads out. I just took this plug over to the mill and milled that to where it's a sharp cut right here and then it tapered off. Same thing on this side. Yeah, this is no good for sealing up an air compressor anymore, and that's what that was, was a plug that come out of one of my air compressors that I replaced. And I just threaded that down in there, and it cut the thread, so that worked out pretty good. Alright, so now, let's see if we can get this on there with little effort. So we're going to take some of this oil here and put it in the hole inspect stuff uh, let's check make sure that these uh, screws here are tight and they are
Now when you go to torque these, just torque them to about that much on each one of them. You got to be precise. It's got to be just that much. If you go too much, then you're going to have to back it off and do just that much. Did anybody understand that? Alright, so now we've got that. Alright, we've got this sealed. Now we need to take care of this. Uh, that thing needs to be actually I don't think anything goes up in here uh, I don't know what this is for I just don't believe that this is supposed to have uh, the same oil in it so I don't know we're not going to put any in there because the only thing that's up here is electronics uh, so you really don't need anything up there so we're just going to put it together without it if it does need it we got a port to put it in there with so first thing we're going to do is scrape this paint off Alright, so now we're going to take some, some old wore out 180 and we're just going to sand lightly all around that. And get the remainder of that feathered paint off of it. So now you got a nice flat surface. And I did the same thing to that over here on my drill press with the sandpaper I have stuck to the uh, table. Alright, so now we want to hook up our ground. Oh, would you believe that? I didn't put this back on it. I'm just, I'm just doing everything backwards here, man. So I gotta take that back off. out and see if that's right we're gonna put this on continuity no continuity
Now just for shits and giggles, I want to test something else. We got us some 10W40 here. And I'm going to test this. I want to see if it is a difference. Now you look at that. 10W40, motor oil, you can see that it's in there, even motor oil is not a conductor of electricity, you just seen it first right here at Bison Workshop. This is motor oil, regular 10W40. You just seen me open it and broke the seal on it. 10W40, premium motor oil. I've got the red in it, I've got the black in it, no continuity. But if I touch them together, Yeah, I think that uh, bullshit of having to have a certain oil is just another ploy to get people to buy something that's more expensive than they can afford. And it, that's what I believe is going on. Uh, we just proved that motor oil is not a conductor of electricity either. The only difference that I can see between motor oil and that oil is that that oil is thinner than this oil. Actually, I probably could have put that in my, uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and fill my container here. While we're at it. Don't want to overfill that thing because you had to put your plunger in there, you're going to push it up out of there. This one here is actually my favorite one. That other one, it loses its prime. This one here doesn't lose its prime. But it keeps getting oil all over the top of it, and I don't know how that's happening, man. It's driving me nuts. I don't even have to use it and it gets oil all over the top. It has to be running down this thing and on top of it. it has to be. Anyway, we're getting off the subject here. Alright, to recap, we've done put this together. Yeah, I'm working with this with my dirty hands. I'm getting it dirty, so... It's going on Craigslist for sale anyway. Alright, so now let's clean our funnel off. Been hanging for a while now. It's got a bunch of dirt on it. And wouldn't you believe even that's too, too big a funnel? So I'm going to have to make a paper funnel, I guess. Let's go ahead and put our plug back in it. And try to make it as straight as possible because you don't want to strip the thread.
Now we have a pump. Now we're going to plug it up. And right now it's in the off position. Couldn't ask for a better running pump. But there you have the uh, pump build. And this is a Model 53D. Third horsepower. Thermally protected. Uh, Zoller sewage and some pump sump pump so a bit of news for the bison workshop is I was informed now I don't know if this is going to happen or not uh, I might be putting the cart before the horse but it seems that Bison Workshop is going to have a another shop visit from another YouTube shop. So I'm not going to tell you who it is. Uh, if it happens, it's going to happen next week. So I got to get my house clean. I got to get my shop clean. Got to do all this stuff. <laughs> so. Uh, I ain't got much to do in this shop. Just clean up a little bit here and there. I got some clutter back there I need to get rid of, but that ain't no big deal. Uh, so, anyway, there's Bison's take on the uh, Zoller M53-D sump pump rebuild. Uh, it's basically it, it basically wasn't a rebuild so to speak it's just a cleanup and repaint uh, because if I was rebuilding it I would have replaced all the seals in it I did not uh, and I actually didn't see that seal that's on the bottom on eBay I looked for all the parts for this thing I looked for a rebuild kit for it uh, I didn't see one of those and you know for for what i'm going to get out of this thing i've already put more than it's worth in it if it if it doesn't work if it leaks then yeah i can't i can't sell that to somebody because if i sell it to somebody it's going to come back on me and i don't like stuff coming back so it's not worth worth the risk and i've got a damn stink bug running around here again thinking he's king of the world he's gonna find out that he's the king of turd mountain because he's getting ready to get the shit then anyway uh, don't forget to like share comment subscribe we're gonna call this a a success on the cleanup part but a fail on the seal part. I, I'm almost certain that seal is leaking. I still don't see no fluid. I, I'm sure it must have been. I just maybe I spilt some on it. I don't know, but I don't see any any more fluid. So we're gonna leave it set in that pan overnight. And if it doesn't leak, then yes. It's a success all the way around. Uh, it probably just needs to work a little bit because we've disturbed everything and it's got to realign itself. The, the bushings hit that spot that needs to be. Uh, or the uh, seal. It spins on that shaft. So maybe it just needs to work itself around and... and uh, let me... Uh, run that a little bit more but anyway while I'm doing that you guys have a good later